Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the Buff IO standard package. Buff means buffered. It's short for buffered, and of course you know what IO is: input and output. And so this is input and output from anywhere, whether standard in, from a file, wherever, anything that supports the read writer interface, right? That you can get stuff from. And specifically, buffer IO is really going to be used when you want to man manipulate text. It's really helpful for text. Um, so it helps you with buffering the data. That means that if you start writing out a file, it's going to sort of queue it up and choose the best time to write it out. And when you're reading, it's going to read in more than you want, but it's going to have it there already in memory. So when you're ready to read for the next act or the next set, it sort of already got it from file. So it's going to help you speed up um, how you access data from especially, especially textual data. Now, before we get into the application we're going to be writing, um, let's see what the application is going to do or enhance application. So one of the things we have so far is our application um, have this data file that um, we've been using. And so I'm going to go back and um, run this and we go see it. Oh, I added some more data and then let's look at the data now itself. And you can see we have full name instead of just name and our application is able to handle that. Age is not properly formatted. And this is what happened in the real world when people give you data. Some of it might be missing here, like in this line where bad doesn't have age and height or bad too, just have the age and other doesn't have an age at all. And so how do you handle that? So we here I've select, elected to just put zeros in that and it's been missing data for age and height. And that can be an indication that all the data would miss in. The other thing I could have done is just check and see if his age and height is zero and say, well, I'm not going to print it out. Um, however you decide to handle it, just be aware that your data is not always going to be well formatted and you need to handle when it's bad data, if you're going to process it at all, um, part of it, the data. And of course, when we pro process it up at the top, as you can see, um, full name and height were correctly displayed um, because again, we handle that. And even for users, when the one name was given, whether it was first name or last name, that is handled or if both was given, that was also handled. So how did I write this application then? And so that's what we're going to be doing in this video is how do we handle all these different scenarios with delimited um, text? Now, our delimiter here is a comma, but keep in mind that it could have been anything else. We could have chosen to delimit it by colon, semicolon, slash, whatever makes sense to you. In the case when you use comma, um, or you have text file that's delimited this way, we tend to call them comma delimited file or CSV files. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you always deliver it by comma. You could deliver it by, I say, tabs or whatever. All right. So let's um, start now on the implementation. And we're going to start with the example, the split example that we use in section three for strings package when we look at a string package. And so we're going to copy that and essentially run, rerun that code to make sure that oh, we know where we're starting. And so if you look here, our data doesn't have um, more than one word for any field, right? So name is just one word and so on. Even the heading is just one word. So we're going to start by just modifying um, the data to how we want it and rerun our program and see how it deals with it. And of course, we know that it's not going to deal with it very well because it wasn't written to handle, for example, if we write full name instead of just name and we go back and run this, we'll see how our program is going to break and it can't read the data. This is not good. Um, it's too fragile. And again, we're not going to be able to handle every bad thing that could be wrong with the data, but we should be able to handle some of the common things. Um, and so, for example, if I update our data here by adding some more text, and um, of course, I'm going to have to delimit it also um, with the comma to say that oh, if you're reading a line, every time you reach a comma, is a new set of data. Uh, we need to be able to handle that. And we have some idea how we might be handling this already because we know for the header, we kind of read it and we split it. All right. So um, before we get into how to write this application, though, we should sort of think about the design of our application. So far, we had some functions that we call first to read the header, then to get the row repeatedly. I think a much more scalable design, and it's not the only design, is to incorporate Go Routine. If we have a Go routine that's only responsible for opening the file, reading from it, reach, reading by lines, one full line of text, and putting that on a channel, and then when it's finished, it closes that channel, we can have out of Go routine that sort of read from that line channel, take a line, and turn it into a person. And of course, if we want, we can have another Go routine that reads the outputs of a person channel and display it or write it somewhere else. That's entirely up to us. But at least I think these two Go routine, the one that reads from the file, and put just lines of text 
um, on the channel. And then another one that reads those line of text and turn them into a person is a fairly good design and a nice starting point because if we imagine that our files had thousands or millions of entries, now we can scale up um, the processing of it by using more processors by having more um, go routine the in the purple box there, the one that get the rows. And so it would read from the same channel because I don't think the bottleneck would be the one that's reading from the file and just reading a line and put it in the channel. I think the bottleneck is going to be the time it takes to split it and scan it and all this other stuff to turn it into a person. So we could certainly um, make our application more efficient. In terms of the function there that just the green box that read um, a line and figure out what the header is, we could enhance it so that if it reads the first line and it's not in header, it puts it back on in the channel as a row to be processed. But we're not going to do that in this ex example. We're going to assume that we always have a header. All right. So let's now jump in to looking at how we're going to code up this example. Um, and so we're going to start by going to our code and um, saying, what's the first thing we want to do? The first thing we want to do really is that go routine that reads from a file and puts it onto a channel. So essentially what we want is a read file or read data um, go routine and it just takes a file name and then it puts output a it returns a channel that you can read strings from and so this is the signature of that function and you really don't need to watch me type this up i'm gonna make speed things up here and so if we just jump to the implementation that's what the implementation of that read file um, go routine looks like it's a generator right it just takes it creates a channel returns that channel as a read only channel but then it goes off spin off a go routine that repeat that opens the file if there's no error then it returns of course if there's an error um, when it returns because the channel was never initialized we have a null, a nil channel okay and then other than that it just sit there in a loop and so long we don't have any error it just read a string and put it on the channel the only thing we need to decide now is how does it read an entire string we know so far that when we do scan it's always stop on um, white spaces, whether it's a new line or just a space. So this wouldn't work for us. So we need to use buffer IO. And this is what I was saying, buffer IO really helps with textual IO. And so if we look, there's this one that's called read string, and you could tell it what the delimiter is, which is basically how far you want it to read um, before it stops. And in our case, we want it to read until it reads a new line. So we're gonna use that, but before we use that, we see it all, we're going to need to create something actually. Um, you cannot call this um, read string without first um, creating a reader. And this is a buff IO reader. This is different than the IO stream reader. And so we're going to call new reader function um, that's providing the buff IO package. And now we're going to use that to get a new reader. And once we have a new reader, we can go back now and start um, reading lines of text. And so we're going to do that and again the read the go routine here for reading from a file the next thing we want to do is go back up to main and adjust things because now we have this function that's going to um, read from a file and then put it on a channel well then we need to call that function get a channel as the output and then pass that channel to our get error function now our get error function is a synchronous function which means that oh, it doesn't go off and do something and that is go routine is going to be on the main go routine so um our generator that's generating lines is just going to put a line be ready to put a line on the channel but nobody's going to be there to read it so when our get header function goes and read from that channel it's going to pull off that one line the um and then strip out the, the header and return so it's only going to read the one line and this is where i talk about where if you wanted to you could put it back put back the line if that line wasn't really a header and so in terms of jumping onto the implementation of get header, it looks like this now. Just the input is a channel that you can read from, read only um, channel, and then return the header. That's it. And so again, very straightforward mm -hmm. implementation there for get header. Of course, we've made some changes, so now it's time to test it. So when we run our code now, we can see as how um, our score routine that's reading from a file is putting a line there. And our get header function is taking that line, splitting it, and giving us our headers. Of course, it's still not fixed in terms of how H, for example, should look, but we'll get to that. One thing we notice there is that we have an extra new line. And if we go back and read the implementation, or the documentation rather, for the buffer that um, 
read string, it tells you how it, re it returns the delimiter also in terms in the text that it returns. So we're getting an extra new line. So we fix that very easily here by um, putting in this trim space, calling this trim space function from our strings package. And so now that trims off any white space, which includes new line. And now we can see when we run our code, it looks um, much better. We don't have that extra new line. So now that we've um, finished working on get editor for now anyway, um, it's time to jump up to main and comment out our code that would be looping over rows. And so we want our get row function to now read strings from this lines channel where we have just lines of text. And now, since we know there's just a line of text that represents a row, we have to do the work here now to parse that into the different fields. So one thing we can do is just um, split it. And can we know if we split it on the commas, we'll have the individual parts. And then we, for each part, we can then use S, S scan because we have a string now. It's already read in. So now we can use S scan F or S scan line, whatever we want to scan in the individual um, specific formatted data that we want. And um, the other thing we can do is now look for how many fields we got when we said we split it. Because remember, some cases, if we say split by a comma and there's only one field or no comma, then we can end up with just one field or two. And so we can handle that. We can say, at first, if we don't have three fields, then we return. That would be the case where we say we don't have enough, a complete um, valid record, or at least we don't think we have a valid record because we don't have a minimum of um, exactly three fields, then we could just return. Are we gonna see, we're gonna come back and revisit this idea and enhance it a little bit. So now that we have um, our get row function implemented to read a string from the channel and then produce on another channel a person or at least a pointer to a person if it um, so happened to get enough information, we can unceremoniously jump to main and look at um, where we now just call get row to get that channel. And of course, get row is now a generator that's off running in a go routine. And now we could be on the main go routine. Remember, we always have one go routine any, um, anyway unless we create others. And so we're in the main go routine now, looping over and reading from those channels. So right now we have about three go routines, right? Our main, and then the one we spun off to read from the file. When that finishes, it's gonna close the channel and just go away and clean up itself. So we don't have to worry about it. And then this other one that's here sitting, um, turning lines into um, persons. They all three should be running pretty much at the same time just because we didn't buffer our channels. And so our, the, the, this get row one is only going to pull off one record from the channel and therefore the one that's reading and pushing lines on is not going to be able to push any lines until it was ready to receive. But whatever, we understand all that already. And so this is what the code look like. And so if we go over and we run it, we see it working really nicely here and we can go and put in some bad record to test if we're dealing with bad records. And the problem we're going to run into here is on our main go, rout uh, main go routine, we're um, block looping over, waiting for person objects, but then in a get row, we're just returning. So we didn't end that channel, so we deadlock. So if we go back and we say skip over or like continue, then that works. We can do other things too. We can say, well, look, um, if we don't have exactly three values when we split a line, we could find a way of dealing that and say, well, okay, if in case it's um, one value we have, then we know it's just the name. If we have two, then it's the name and the age. Well, um, and then if we have three, then, you know, of course we deal with it the other way. And this is one way, and this works perfectly fine in terms of handling the case of, you know, um, where we, only, we don't have enough record. And we could see that again, if we just run our code here, we'll see that how this, 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 this works. Another way of dealing with this is to just move this around a little bit. And this is the one and only place where, well, actually it's not the only place, but this is one of the instances where you can use case statement and fall through in switch statement. Now, um, there are some people who would say you never ever really need to use fall through. Again, the previously we did it, works fine as you saw. Um, this is just another way of simplifying the code. If using fall through in switch statement give you a headache or you staunchly against it, just don't use it. Just stick to the previous way it was. It works fine that way and it's pretty readable and you don't have to worry about who's gonna be confused about where you're entering that switch statement and leaving. Now, some other things we could go to is fix up our um, headers. 
as you know, when we had our headers, we still had age was showing up in a, um, incorrectly. So one of the things you can do is just lower the string for each age, um, for each title, uh, for each header, and then turn it into a title. And then that works pretty well in terms of fixing it um, correctly. As you can see, um, when we run the code again, well, it looks um, pretty good. It looks exactly like we would want to see it. Um, and look at age, full name, same, works very nicely. So we first lower it and then we think. Um, the other thing we can do is um, go back to our um, code and say, well, in terms of name, when um, a username, we press a username, we want to do the same thing, just lower it and turn it into a title. And again, this fixes um, all the weird cases where names might be given in mixed cases. Um, finally, we have this one problem where um, the name bad was the only thing that was provided, no age or height was provided. So we have a new line. And if you remember that our input always includes the new line, which is sort of like all we de dealt with when we had the header line, or there was a trailing um, new line. So we have to go and do the same thing here on name is we have to trim it. And so again, that's very easy to do. And we can do that here. And then we rerun it and um, it fixes the code. And so um, no problem here. Pretty easy fix. All right. So um, hopefully you learned something. Again, a little bit of a contrived example, but it included a number of ideas and our application is sort of much more understandable, I think. Um, it can grow very easily to, um, to deal with other cases. Like I say, one of the things you can do is look at the flags package, which we're not gonna cover, and that allow you to handle processing command line flags, but you don't need that to handle a command line flag. Like we know to access the command line by using os.args, so we can check for something like a minus D option, see what comes after that to determine if we should use commas or delimiter or not. Anyway, you could pass that down through to our things that doing the splitting. Enough about that. I think you can think of ways to enhance this. All right, take care. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video. Um, don't forget to thumbs up the video. Definitely subscribe if you're watching this and you're not subscribed. I appreciate it. And I would appreciate if you could spread the word also. Have a great day.